from London, England. It's the, 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 the Tom Likey Show. We invite you to have a go. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likes. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likes Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio from London, England. Our thanks to the Los Angeles Kings for bringing us to England for the uh, historic games between the uh, Los Angeles Kings and the Anaheim Ducks being played. Uh, footsteps where we're sitting at the O2 Arena here in London, England. And um, those games being played this weekend. They count, by the way, and that's what makes them historic. I mean, the NHL has played uh, hockey games outside of the United States uh, in a variety of countries under a variety of circumstances, but not a lot of games that have counted. They played in Japan. They did, but they've never played in Europe. And um, I believe last time I read it was about 30% of the players in the National Hockey League are from Europe, but they've never played a game here. So we're here to see the first two ever played in Europe. And these games have been sold out, apparently, for months. So we're lucky to be getting in, for God's sake, much less be be flown here by the Los Angeles Kings. How great is that? So uh, very exciting. By the way, if you can't be in England uh, to uh, to enjoy the games in person, they will not only be available uh, on Fox Sportsnet Saturday and uh, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Los Angeles time, uh, but uh, if you don't live in the Southern California area, uh, the National Hockey League has uh, their center ice package, which they're offering a free preview for the first week of the season. And these games will be available on your cable system. They'll be available on uh, DirecTV, Dish Network. I mean, you'll be able to see them everywhere because the uh, hockey package will be free. So uh, see the games that uh, we're talking about at 9 a.m. Pacific time this week. Very exciting. Great to be here. Having a blast. Next week, we return to the cockpit in Los Angeles. And we're staying in SoCal for the foreseeable future. I've been on the road. By the way, where have I been besides London? My God, it's outrageous. The Kentucky Bourbon Festival, we were in Kentucky. Dallas with Russ Martin, we were there. Um, I was in uh, Biarritz, which is in France, folks. I know Americans don't know where it is because I didn't see a single American the whole time I was there. Paris. I was in New York City. I was in uh, Tuscany. Rome. All of that since the 1st of July. And somehow we keep this show together. Somehow we keep it keep it operational. But it'll be nice to sleep in my own bed. It'll be nice to check my mail. I'm sure my creditors would like to know where I am. Probably should go home and read the bills and then possibly pay them. That's what I'm going to try to do. So we'll return to Los Angeles next week, and uh, we're going to stay there through the at least through Thanksgiving and beyond. So we have a good 12 weeks at least before we go anywhere again. Anyway, um, we have had, uh, of course, our share of callers. You've heard them. There are women who tune into this show, and occasionally there's a man, but usually it's women who tune into this show because they get that uh, they get that feeling that if they don't tune in, there's something wrong. There's like they feel threatened by the content of the program. They think if they don't listen, that they're going to miss something about their husbands or boyfriends or the guys they date or whatever. Uh, there are women who tune into this show not because they like it. In fact, many of them hate it. They tune into the show because the guys say, you know what, you really ought to listen to this show. Or maybe they'd say nothing. Maybe the woman is in the car and the guy has the radio on 
and you hear him listening all the time and you're like, I don't get it. I have to figure out what it is he sees in Tom Likas or what he sees in this show. So there are many of you ladies out there and some guys who feel like if you don't tune in, you know, maybe the other person get the idea to dump you or divorce you or uh, maybe the other person is not satisfied by you. I know there's a lot of you out there who are not satisfying your men. Maybe as some of you 180 pounders out there, the fat and fugly fives we love to talk about, who uh, maybe are first realizing in the real world that no matter how much you think your boyfriend, husband, whatever loves you, that he'd probably dump you if he could afford to. It's just you're so fat and and he doesn't have the money to get out. I mean, how about the revelation we've had on this show that guys would leave if they won the lottery? They won lotto. They would leave you, ladies. I'm sure there are some women who would leave the guys, too, if they won lotto. But the point is, there are many women listening to this show because they're afraid of being left behind, because they feel threatened by the content. There are many women who listen even though it wouldn't be their favorite show. Now, we do shows where we ask the haters to call in, and that's fine, but that's not what I'm talking about. Some of you may be just mystified by it. Some of you may be confused about it. Some of you say, hey, wait a minute. What is it about my boyfriend? He likes this show. What is it about my husband? He worships this guy. So you're tuning in to try to figure it out. If you are one of those people, I would like to talk to you here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. If you're one of those women who tunes in because the, the, the her boyfriend or the husband recommended you tune in or you happen to overhear the fact that he's listening all the time or maybe he's got one of our bumper stickers on the car and you're starting to get nervous or maybe you're getting older and you're afraid he's going to dump you and you're hoping you can get clues as to what's going on. There could be any number of reasons. If you are one of these people, you call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. I would like to find out about the women and probably some of the men who tune in because they either overheard their significant other tuning in or because they were told, you know, you really should listen. I've had guys say, you really should listen because they hear me on the radio saying, if your wife is fat, you're not going to get aroused by her. And the guy doesn't know how to tell his wife is fat. She's fat. So he says, you should listen to that guy. And then they hear me on the radio saying, you know what, ladies? You're fat. You do look fat in that dress. You do look fat in those pants. He'll never tell you you look fat in those pants. Uh, so a lot of women are getting their advice in kind of a negative way because they don't want to be listening to this show. They, it's a guy show. But somehow they're afraid they might miss some piece of information. Or somehow they think there'll be clues to why their husbands act the way they do or their boyfriends. If you are one of these women or men, call me right now. Tom, Tom, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I never pretended to be a nice guy. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like this show from London at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. All right, tell them to talk to all the people, primarily women, who listen to this show because they feel threatened or because they were told you should listen to this. It's Liz on the Tom like this show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Um, I can't hear you very well. Oh, that's better. Are you there? No, I left the room. Can I take a message? <laughs> You'd like to take a message? Hello? Did you hang up? She'll call back. I can probably do it again. What? What? Eight, yeah, put her back if she comes back. Put her back. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Regina 
or is that Regina? Hello. No, it's Regina. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm glad to hear that. I wanted to tell you that uh, seven years ago, my boyfriend said to me, you need to listen to Tom Likas. And I said, okay, fine. So I started listening to you, and I hated you at the beginning. Um, being a single mother of three, I was like, I can't believe he's saying this. And then I was just in the car, and I started just paying attention to what you had to say. And I loved it. I love your show now. Uh, my boyfriend now came, became my husband. We're married. And we have two children. So now I have five. And you know what? And I he's a list- Wait, rules. wait, wait. He, yes. He's a listener? He's a listener. But I'm he got married and he's got so five kids. Okay. We have five kids. And you know what? Life is great. I work. He works. We have a great home. And I love your show. Fantastic. It is great. It, you know what? Some of it speaks the truth, and some of it is just a little nonsense. But I just want to tell you that I, I listen to you, and women that hate you should just really pay attention instead of just nagging and bitching and oops, oh, sorry, and just. And, and by the way, men. and by the way, proving my point. What is your point? Well, no, no. When women call in here and bitch and moan at me, they're proving my point. When I talk about oh. what women are like. Definitely. But you know what? Women should be smarter than that. Instead of complaining and getting all upset, they should just listen to what you really have to say and pay attention and just follow your rules. And you know what? Men will always get married to women that are smart and that are outgoing and hard workers. And you know what? Whatever other women complain about, Oh, the, this guy doesn't buy this, or this guy. You know what? He will eventually come through if you play your cards right. Now there you go. Well, Regina, thank you very much for that. Regina. Oh, Regina. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so that's all I wanted to hear, Tom. Keep going. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. All right. Bye. There she goes. Unbelievable. Let me get Liz on the air here. She called back. Liz. Oh, do we lose her again? Oh, what a shame. I want to get Liz on the air. Jesus. Let's get uh, Marie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, how are you? Great. (laughs) I just got off work, and the first thing I do is turn on my radio and listen to you. And why is that? You're awesome. Actually, you know what? The person that got me listening to your show was my boyfriend we've been together for two years and now when i get home and i want to you know kind of tell him very briefly uh you know what your show was about he tells me to shut up he says he doesn't want to hear it so he thinks you're actually full of crap now when he used to love you two years ago i don't know what happened oh because it became pussified (laughs) i think that actually you know it's really funny because you know i I go home and i talk to him about you know for example when you start talking about the tramp stamp or, you know, 19-year-old men getting women pregnant and things like that, he just tells me he doesn't want to hear it. He tells me to shut up, and, he, t- he t- you know, he tells me that he saw you once going to the whiskey and that you're one fat, ugly guy and that you have no idea what you're talking about, and the only reason you can get women is because of your money. No. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess he wishes he had my money. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> but, you know, it's... Um, Actually, we had broken up, and we got back together and, you know, kind of trying to work things out again and, you know, see what happens. I'm 21. He's 28. And a lot of the time he tells me to grow up when I believe he has a lot of growing up to do because a lot of the stuff, how he acts, and how, and sometimes the things that come out of his mouth just kind of makes me want to slap him. <laughs> Sounds to me like you're not long for this world with him. You know what? I used to be in love with him, and now it's kind of like I just have love for him. Kind of like I just care about him. You're on the way out the door. I can tell. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. You know, only time tells. So, I'm just by the gonna... way, by the way, Marie, after you leave him, if you'd like to come over and visit my money and me, uh, <laughs> I'd be happy to have you as my guest. <laughs> I'll go ahead and let him know that. Or actually, yeah, please you know do. 
I'm going to let him know that I'm going to tell him I got personal invitation. You can call him from my house, and we'll have my name on the caller ID and everything, just, just so he knows you were there. <laughs> well, Tom, thank you. I want to say, you know, thank you. You are so great. Uh, a lot of the things you say are the truth. And, you know, I've experienced things with an ex-boyfriend I had. He actually cheated on me with one of my friends. And, you know, you just speak the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. You either take it or leave it. That's quite so, a friend. So that's just exactly. I know. I booted her ass out before I booted his. Good. So, <laughs> so yeah, I just want to say thank you. And, you know, all the women out there, I know you probably don't like Tom Likas, but he is awesome. Listen to his, his advice. It will go a long way. Thank you, Marie. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Love you. Appreciate the call. Let me go. Oh, Liz is back again <laughs> on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Am I on this time? Why, yes. Uh, I thought y'all were messing with me. No, here you are. I'm here. You, me, this microphone. <laughs> There's a bond. I can feel it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you should feel my open palm on the cheek of your ass. And that's something to feel. It would probably feel very much like an open palm on the cheek of an ass. No. My open palm on the cheek of your ass is <laughs> different. Special. You have a, a special palm. You just have to find out. I don't know. Gosh, I've never even met you. It's never stopped me. <laughs> nice. So, okay, so you're having a show. You want to talk to people who are listening because they were told you got to hear this, right? Well, yes. So that's basically why I'm, why I'm here. Every time I get in the car, it's on, you know, and this is the channel my husband listens to, and he listens to your show, and we've discussed it a couple of times, but so I'm listening to see what it's about. So what do you think it's about? Um, it's, a, it's about, uh, in Dallas, it's about three hours. It's about three hours long. <laughs> and what kind of content do you like to have on? What kind of content? Well, you've been listening. What are you hearing? Well, what I'm hearing just la just now, you know, I listen actually heard just enough for you to say that you should call in if that's the reason you're calling but just now what i heard so you've never heard the show before bits and pieces um i remember listening I mean, to you other... said it's on in your car constantly you even said no, that my you husband's and your husband car in my about, husband's car so but when you I said that the, the two of you have discussed the show yet you claim not to know anything about what's on it no, no no i said i hear bits and pieces and that's what i was going to say the part that i heard the other night you were talking to some kid some stoner kid who was had his baby at his house or something. He claimed he never smoked pot when the kid was around or whatever. That was the show that I listened to when you were oh, telling this kid how much of it. I think he was having unprotected sex or something. And you were well, if he has a baby, he probably is having unprotected but, sex. Right. And I think he had somebody pregnant or something also or somebody possibly. I don't know. Right. Somebody who, like I said, you know, typically it's on in the car when we get on. That doesn't necessarily mean. Did you ask your husband why he tunes in? Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Because what did he, he thinks you're a smart guy. He says, and it's uh -huh. and it's funny. And so my question to him was because, like I said, I mean, I'd hear little blurbs and stuff like on my way home today. What I heard was something about fat, ugly women. The only reason their men stay with them is because they can't, they can't afford, afford to leave. To leave them, right? Right, and stuff like that. And so you know, I've heard little blurbs like that, and and you agree that with I that, don't you? My, that that's perfectly reasonable, isn't it? What that fat. Ugly women, their men only stay with them because they can't get out. Correct. I'm sure that's the case in a lot of a lot of cases. Probably so. I mean, people don't typically marry for the right reasons anymore. They marry a because they want a piece of ass, or b because if they're a woman, typically they're marrying for money. A lot of times, yeah. I mean, a lot of times that's true. I Why wouldn't you want to marry a woman who's a piece of ass? Why would you just want to what? You want to marry a woman with a big ass? I don't understand. What? You don't understand why? You would. Why would a man, you're telling me it would be true love if a man didn't care what his wife looked like? Oh, well, I mean, uh, true love, I, I don't know. See, I'm not a big love is a cosmic thing kind of thing. For me, love is an action. It's If you love somebody, you're working towards loving that person. You're taking care of that person. To me, it's not, ooh, we have so to So you don't naturally love, love your husband. You have to work at it. We constantly serve each other, yes. And that's, really? to me, what love means. That's what love means to me. It's a partnership. Serving a somebody. Really? Yeah. For us. It's constantly I mean, not constantly love. serving somebody. Huh? Constantly serving somebody. And constantly being served by them as well. 
Mm. Okay. But uh, you're you're saying to me that if a man uh, is not attracted to his wife, that's superficial. If he's not attracted to his wife? Yeah. Let's say that she's just allowed herself to roll up the pounds, 160, 170, 180. Well, how would that be serving him? How does it benefit him by her not taking care of herself? And well, anyway, darling, darling, next time you're in the supermarket, emotionally... next time you are in the supermarket, take a look around at your neighbors. Right. If, I'm, not, if, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. Well, you're... what I'm telling you is that that's pretty much uh, what women do after they get married in the oh, United States. Not is they, and I didn't the say that. I right, said because, pretty much. Because that's what they do. Trying to, and that's what I said. People get married for the wrong reasons these days. You're getting married for a lot of times, especially the women. They get married for somebody to support them. So they want to look like a husband. By the way, that's, that is not a new... By the way, darling, yeah, that is not a new trend. That is not a new trend. Women have always done that. Right. Well, okay, in society now and in the past. And, yeah, that's what you see. I mean, a woman wants to be taken care of, and so instead of... So if, if a woman has that attitude, is it unreasonable to expect that she's going to be a hot piece of ass? If she has that attitude that she needs to... Oh, yeah, that's what... Yeah, I'm agreeing completely, yeah. And when okay, that's good. what your marriage is about, when your entire relationship is based on the whole... You, what do you have for me? What do I have for you? Well, I've got a great piece of ass for you, and you have a Well, that's pretty for much me. why people get married. I mean, really, what is the other reason to get married? You, you can, everything you do in a marriage, you can do without a marriage. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we got married because the actual ceremony was important to us, and, you know, that's silly to a lot of people. I understand that, but for us, it was important. You could even have a commitment ceremony. You could even have a commitment ceremony. Yeah. Without actually signing the legal documents and getting married. You could do that. Oh, yeah, we could have. I mean, gay people do but, it all the time. You could right. do that. Yeah, we could have. That's not what we wanted. We did what well, we wanted. The, but... You don't need to be married. Okay. Where are you right? going with this? I, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> but I don't have to be married? Yeah, absolutely. I don't have to. Right. But I choose to be. We, we like being married. Well, you know, again, any man who likes being married hasn't analyzed it thoroughly and realized there are no benefits to a man to get married. Well, for us there is. I mean, like you said, it just the actual cere- – okay, so you're saying the actual ceremony, the writing on the paper is the unnecessary part. That's what you're saying? I, the, the contractual the companionship requirement. The and all that can happen without the, the piece of paper. The, the, the legal handcuffs you place on each other. Yeah. I mean, you do understand I, that the I, wedding, oh, I get what you're saying, yeah. The wedding ring. Do you have a wedding ring? Probably do, right? Not, we don't wear rings, no. I mean, so we don't. have them, but neither of us actually wear well, them. You know, you, know the, you know the origin of a wedding ring, and I'm not kidding. You know the origin of a wedding ring? I don't. It, it originally came from the idea of a link in a chain. Go on. You're chaining yourself to somebody else. It's, okay. it's, it's just like handcuffing yourself to them. Right. Right, and I, I don't, I'm not opposed to being chained to him. I am opposed to being chained really? to somebody else. But, oh, absolutely not. He's my best friend. I mean, he's, you know, the oh, one person that, that you believe. call when you're bored and you want someone to hang out with. That's that's who he is to me. Really? So you don't have any girlfriends? Oh, I have a couple of girlfriends, but I'd rather hang and, out with him. And and your, do your girlfriends know anything about you that he doesn't know? Oh no, nobody knows. So more so they about don't. Him him. So they they don't know about like guys you dated in the past or. Uh, the not first time you had sex, or not that he doesn't know about. So no, there's nothing. Husband, there's nothing everything. your friends know. There's nothing your friends know that that he doesn't know. Absolutely. You know that's very unusual. It is very unusual, and it's funny because that's what people tell me all the time. It's almost weird, but he. I mean, we really are. We're not like the normal what you see. We're not, and that's why I say. I mean, I agree. Marriage today, it's silly. People don't really in my opinion, understand what a true marriage is all about. I mean, to me, a marriage is the melting of two personalities, two people, if you will. But your personality doesn't opinion. melt. Why would you compromise anything? Why would you compromise? That's not compromising. We're just of course it together is. and finding the things, no, the no, synergies no. that if, work. If I have to melt my personality like, like, a, like a slice of cheddar cheese into a hamburger, uh, I'm, I'm compromising. I want to be the whole burger. Well, we are we're together a whole burger. That's the way we like it. I think you're uh, you're you one's a slice of cheese, the other's a burger, and you've kind of glommed on each other, kind of melted into each other a little bit, but you're still yeah, a piece of exactly. cheese and a hamburger. Well, okay, yeah, but it, we're a piece of cheese and a hamburger that tastes really good together. Really? 
Yeah. I guess you've eaten it. You would know. Uh, <laughs> I have eaten it, and it is good. Okay. So that brings us back to the question of why he listens. Why he listens to since, the show? Since he so disagrees with everything I stand no, for. No, 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 I never said that. No, he said that you're a smart guy, that he does agree. Mm. And I'm well, not does that I tell disagree you? either. I'm just waiting to hear more. I'm, I'm still listening, trying to learn. I don't, okay, good. Do you feel like I'm attacking you? No, no, no. Oh, because you're really defensive, and I'm not trying to attack you. No, I'm not defensive at all. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to draw you out a little bit here. Well, my see, and what I was trying to say earlier, and I don't remember where the conversation went, but I had heard, oh, because we were talking about the fugly women, and yes. men won't stay with them. And so, at one point, I had asked him and said to him, "Well, this guy has no respect for women." He said, "Actually, you know what? I really don't believe that's true." And that was going to be my question to you: Do you respect women? And what is your take on your feelings about women? Do you feel like I, you have I, I don't respect anybody as a group. I don't respect, oh, respect okay. men, women, members of the AARP, old people, groups? crippled people. I don't respect any group. Do you okay? disrespect as a group? I, people have to earn my respect. Okay. They, start, they start with none. So everybody. So you disrespect humanity. It's not disrespecting. The people start with zero. Exactly. And then they have to build up. Right. In the same way. Yes. And that's now, like now if you're 27 years system. old and you become Mrs. Phil Spector, now you're starting to go into the negative. You're losing my respect. Because I, because when I don't you are there, people. When you are there at O.J. Simpson's arraignment and you say, I am the girlfriend of O.J. Simpson, you're losing respect. You start at zero, and now you're moving down. Oh, I thought you said, I'm losing your respect. Okay. No. So O.J. Simpson's what... girlfriend. Oh, so, based, yeah, that, well, that makes sense. You're judging people based on what you see their actions. Right. So why would you say, do you respect women? I, why would I respect a do group have, of 150 what, what, what million I meant people? Was, do you disrespect is what I meant. Do you have a blatant hate and disregard? No, for I don't. I don't. But how could I hate uh, what I have sex with, for God's sake? I would hope that you don't. And that's, again, why I'm listening Any to Any more than I hate my, my tube sucks. I well. don't know. Huh? And I said that's what my husband said as well. Is I don't believe he has a, a, a hate, a disrespect for women. I believe that it's actually kind of the opposite. And so that's kind of, like I said, Isn't I don't that, know. That, you know, I'm just starting, like I told you. You know, I'll hear bits okay. and pieces when we're in the car. Good. Typically we're in conversation when we're in the car. But we'll hear bits and pieces and, and discuss the show in the piece we hear. Do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean, dear. Tom, Tom, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. You are the most repulsive person I've ever heard on the radio. Well, thank you very much. I take that as a compliment. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Well, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And we're talking to primarily women who are listening because they feel threatened. You know, the boyfriend listens, the husband listens, the guys they date listen. Or because they were told, you should listen to this. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. Um, yeah, I was just calling. Um, I have a fiancé. We're actually getting married in a week and a half. And um, he listens to your show every day. <laughs> How old is so, he? He's 26 um, in December, actually. He's 25 now. But, um, yeah, he listens to your show every day, and he would come home every day talking about it and saying how funny it is and everything. So I started listening to it, and at first I was really offended. <laughs> Believe really? me, I mean, it's just like, I mean, it just seems like a lot of things you say are just really negative against women, but... Um, you know, actually, after listening to it, it's it's really catchy. You know, I started listening to it every day, too. But um, just after listening to it for a while, it's actually really educational. <laughs> really? Like, yeah. I mean, you kind of learn how the guy's mind works better, you know, and you learn the things to avoid and the things that you should do to keep him around and stuff like that. And it's like I hear women calling in all the time just complaining and just giving you a hard time and stuff, but... I think it's actually really great. And, That's because they are the women I'm talking about. What's that? Oh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Those women call in and prove my point. Yes, they do. It kind of makes women look like fools sometimes. <laughs> I love that. 
Yeah, you know, at first I felt like that too. I wanted to call in and just, you know, be mad at you and but you to just kind of listen to it and take your advice, you know, not the same kind of advice you give men, but if you just listen to that kind of advice, then you actually learn stuff from it, you know. That's right. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't know. I think it's great, and uh, I think you're doing a great thing, even though some people disagree. But um, Well, thank you for I that. <laughs> I think that you're very entertaining, and um, I don't always agree with everything that you say, but I don't take it personally, you know. But most of the time, you are 100% right. <laughs> Why? Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call. Here we are at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Elizabeth on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, this is Elizabeth. Um, it, you want to make a call there, dear? Yes, I'm calling because I ah. listen to the show every day, and I get irate about it every day. It every so day. Much. But my boyfriend had told me to keep listening because he says that when you, um, when women like me call in, that I'm the exception to the rule about most of the things that you think and that you really like people who are exceptions to the rule or to your rules. Well, certainly I don't like the rules. I can tell you that. People who live up to the rules or live down to them, I don't like them. Yeah. But I keep listening, and I just, I'm hoping that maybe someday that I'll get a some type of what he's saying is true that, I won't get angry. <laughs> well, does it really matter? Isn't the show entertaining at least? It's entertaining. Like I said, I listen every day. So Right. Um, so even if you're getting angry, if it's entertaining, does it really matter? I guess not. I guess, I, I mean, it's at least better than listening to music and things like that. I'd rather listen right. to radio. Of course. But I just disagree with a lot of the views that you have on women, and I'm just hoping. Yeah, but that. but but you disagree because you say, but I'm not like that. But 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 you can't disagree about the other women, can you? Right. And most of the things I've met women like that before, but I always say, well, that's not something I would do. But but we're not talking about you. We're talking about women in general. Can you understand the difference between a show about Elizabeth and a yes. show about women in general? Yes, I I just think that maybe you should say. There's a lot want, of women so you, they do this. You want me to give your full name? What is your full name, Elizabeth? I don't want to say it on the radio. Well, you, I mean, what do you want me to do? Pick the individuals out of the phone book like you, <laughs> who are the exceptions to the rule? Hey, women are a bunch of creeps, except for Elizabeth in Dallas. She's not a creep. That's right. I like that. It, come on. That's ridiculous. You can't do a radio show like that. It's broadcasting. We're broadcasting to a broad audience of broads. Well, I just wish that you would say it, there are some women who did that. I, it's not necessary. If I say most women are X, it, it should, I give women enough credit for having enough intelligence to know that the word most is not the equivalent of the word all. Right. But I feel like a lot of times you say that all women are... Uh, no, okay. but I don't. I don't say the word all. I Because, for example, uh, people always call me and they say, you always say that all women are gold diggers, and, and I'm not a gold digger. Well, I never said all women are gold diggers, because fat and fugly chicks can't be gold diggers, for example. <laughs> well, true. Well, at so least I, if, if I, they I, are, I, I never said all women are gold diggers, because all women could never get away with being gold diggers, ever. Right. All right, that's an example. And people say, you, well, you say that all women are to cheat on their guys. All women are fat. All women. No. No, I don't. Because I clearly I have sex with women and uh, I, I I I date women and so you know obviously I don't feel that way, do I? Right, and I've heard times where you have had respect for women like I don't myself. need I don't I don't have respect for women as a group. I have I, I I give respect to individuals who earn it. Before that, I don't respect any of them. Well, that's that's true. That's you do, <laughs> yeah. You're exactly right on target. Well, so so you yourself, like so many women who listen, you know, I said so many, not all. You, like so many women who listen, um, you uh, assume I use the word all when I just say the word women. Right. But it, that women means women in general. Uh, well, I, 
I, the term I, in general does not mean all. I disagree. What I what I guess what I'm trying to say is that you pick out what a few women do. I would say for the most part. Most no, I pick out what most women do, and then there's people like you who claim to be the exception to the rule. Well, those were not my words. Those were the words of my boyfriend who kept who told me to keep on listening. But really, it doesn't matter if you ever agree with me because the show is entertaining. And that's right. why you listen every day. I do. I do listen every day. <laughs> and I tell people how much I hate the show, and then I listen to it. So Hate it, and you listen every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're going to keep listening, too. Uh, yeah, I probably will. I know. <laughs> All right, dear. Okay, Tom. Well, it's good talking to you. I know. <laughs> and it's good talking to me, too, right? <laughs> No better than talking to anyone else. Angie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. <laughs> hey. I'm so excited to be talking to you. Really? Are we smoking weed today? What are we doing? What? No. Um, I'm oh. actually driving home from work. Well, that never stopped most of our listeners. <laughs> I know, yeah. Not during work. After work, it's something else, though. All right. There we go. Anyway, um, I kind of called in for two reasons. First, I wanted to um, commend you on your show, and I think it is very educational uh, for women. And those women who don't agree and complain about the show, I don't think they open their eyes, you know, and really see what you're talking about. They're just, I don't know, kind of immaturity mixed in with, like, a lot of negativity, you know? So, um and then, also, I wanted to tell you about my situation. Um, I am 25. I'm t- uh, yeah, I will. No, turn the radio off, dear. Don't don't be turning it off. Oh, okay. Hello. No, that you see what happens when you turn it on? Now you're not talking anymore. Yeah. That's why Dean told you to turn it off. Oh, okay. But then you decided to disobey Dean and turn it on in the middle of the call, right? No, I just wanted to see if I was on the radio or not. Dear, I'm talking to you. I know. <laughs> Why would I waste my time talking to you if we weren't making radio together? Yeah, it's true. Sorry about that. I mean, if I met you on the street, I wouldn't have two words to say to you. The only reason I'm talking to you is because somebody in New York mails me a check every two weeks to have conversations with people like you. Okay. You um, see, this, okay. this is my job to talk to you. They pay me for this. Right. So if I'm talking to you, that means we're on the air. Because if we were not on the air, I'd find other things to do. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so... I mean, I'm on the clock here, dear, so take all the time you need. <laughs> okay, I'm 25. I'm going to be 26 next month. Um, my boyfriend's 21. And when we met, first of all, I never thought in a million years I would get with someone younger than me. Because, you know, I always thought guys mature a lot slower than girls do, so obviously I need to get with someone a little bit older. And um, so he didn't tell me what his age was. It never came up. I just assumed he was, you know, around my age because the way he acted and how he looked. So after about, like, three times of going out with each other, um, he told me his age, and I was really taken back because that's, like, five years difference, you know? That's huge for me. So... um, Whatever, like, I kind of gave him a chance because I liked him. And, you know, he told me eventually, like, so he was honest with me about it later. You gave him a chance because you liked the way he boned you. Well, it was that, yeah. Of course Um, it was. Yeah, but that wasn't the only reason, you know. Women are so shy about sex, you know. Well, I gave him a chance. You gave him a chance because he was 21. He was boning the crap out of you, and you are really liking it. I was liking that, definitely. But there we on go. Top of, yeah, on top of that, he was a good guy. He got on me, top of that. That's all I look for. When he was on top of you. He was just a really good guy, Tom. Like, honestly, yeah. he was. That's not all I, I look for is sex. I mean, the sex can be great, but the guy can be an Yeah, but first it was the boning. Then you decided to give him a chance. Unbelievable. Thanks so much for the call. Our email address, Tom, at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show. Uh oh. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Those women call in and prove my point. Yes. Sir.